because they will not change net income, but they will result in additional shares of common stock being created, which means net income will be spread across more shares. And that is dilutive. Okay, let's practice. So this is our first simulation here. So we have 500,000 shares of common stock outstanding. And then the company also has the following potentially dilutive securities. So we've got some stock options uh, and some warrants. We've got some cumulative preferred stock. Okay, so step one is we always have to calculate basic EPS. So they tell us that net income is 1 million. Okay, so my net income is 1 million. I need to see if I have any preferred dividends. Okay, so I'm gonna be looking here. All right, I've got 25,000 shares of $100 par 5% cumulative preferred stock. Okay, now the way we calculate the dividend is we just take the percentage and the par value together, right? When they say $100 par 5%, what they mean is the dividend is 5% of the par value. So it's 5% of $100 for each share, which means the, the cumulative dividend for each share of preferred stock is $5 and I have 25,000 shares. So what this means is my total preferred dividend is 125, right? 100 times 0 0.05, that's $5 per share times my 25,000 shares, that's 125,000. Um, and then they tell me that 500,000 shares of common stock are outstanding. There's nothing here that indicates that additional shares were in fact issued or you know retracted. So I'm just gonna divide this by 500K. So I've got 1 million divided by 125, divided by 500,000, that equals 1.75. So that's my basic. Let me, I'm gonna write that right here. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna erase this here now because I need the room for my diluted calculations. So if you have any questions about basic, now's your chance to ask. Okay, so we've calculated basic. Let's look at these one by one. So we'll look at the options first. So the options are exercisable at 50 bucks. And it says the average market price is 40. All right, and then we've got our warrants. The warrants are exercisable at 35 and the market price is still 40. So I'll put MP of 40. My options are not going to be dilutive, right? Because I'm not gonna exercise them. Why would I pay an exercise price of 50 bucks to acquire a $40 share? I could just go in the marketplace and buy that stock for cheaper. I could go buy it for $40 myself. So this option is not gonna be exercised, which means it's not dilutive, right? With options and warrants, if they're not exercised, you're done, right? You don't have to do anything else for them because additional shares of common stock are not gonna be created. Nothing's gonna happen. Now with my warrants, I could acquire a $40 stock for 35 bucks. So I'm in the money, which means I'm gonna exercise it, right? And it says 60,000 warrants so I'm assuming it's just one for one there. They're not telling us anything otherwise, right? So it's going to be a one for one. All right. So my warrants are going to be dilutive. And the effect would be no change with net income, but an additional 60,000 shares in my denominator. This is definitely going to be dilutive because I'm spreading my net income across more shares of common stock. Okay. Now let's take a look at my preferred stock. So I have 25,000 shares. We already calculated what that was. I believe it was 125,000. That was the preferred dividend. 
okay? If my cumulative preferred stock was in fact converted, it would cause my numerator to go up by 125, right? Because all of those preferred dividends that I declared would go away because the preferred stock doesn't exist anymore. It's been converted into common stock, all right? And then each share is convertible into four shares of common stock. So I've got 25,000 shares. Each one goes to four shares of common stock. So my denominator would go up by 100. So I've got 125 divided by 100. This is going to equal 1.25. This is going to be dilutive because it's less than my basic EPS of 1.75. Okay, so for my options, these are going to be anti-dilutive. My warrants are going to be dilutive and my convertible preferred stock is going to be dilutive as well. Now, the final piece of the puzzle is to calculate total diluted EPS. All right, in the examples we were looking at before, those were pretty straightforward because we were looking at each one in isolation. But what you do is you look at each potentially dilutive item and for all of those that are considered to be dilutive, you include all of them in your final calculation. So in other words, I start with basic, right? My basic is 1 million minus the 125,000 of preferred dividends that we established divided by 500K, okay? I've already determined that my preferred stock is in fact dilutive. So I'm going to include the effects of the conversion on my calculation or in my calculation, which means this would go away, all right? That's what the increase in the numerator represents. The preferred dividends are going away because the stock is being converted. Additionally, 100,000 shares of new common stock are being created. That's the effect of the denominator. For my warrants over here, no change in the numerator, right? The exercise of warrants doesn't impact net income, but an additional 60,000 shares of common stock are gonna be created. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking my dilutive items, I'm combining, I'm combining the effects and then applying that to basic EPS to get to my dilutive, right? Because I've determined both of these are dilutive, so I'm going to include them together to get to total diluted EPS. So my new numerator is only 1 million, I'm going to divide that by 660,000, and that will get me to 1.52. That is diluted earnings per share. And we can see that it is less than my basic. Okay. Now for this, they just kind of broke them out separately. We got the 1.56 and the 1.67. But when we combine the effects of both of these, it will result in diluted earnings per share of 1.52. All right, any questions about this problem? Hopefully it's all starting to come together. Okay, we got one more sim and this one is this one is going to be a little bit longer, so we're probably going to go over. This is a recently released AI CPA sim. This one is I would say this one is one of the tougher problems I've seen. Um because it is for 6 months. Everything we've been looking at so far was for a year. This one is for 6 months. So it throws a nice little curveball in, okay? So we have a, a calendar year company. They had several transactions related to raising capital. For each situation in the table below, click the cell in the amount column and enter the appropriate value as it relates to JLC's diluted earnings per share computation. Assume no income taxes. That is important, right? Remember, when we're converting bonds, the interest that we save is normally going to result in additional taxes. So we have like an after-tax interest savings, you know, that we sort of need to compute. They're saying assume no income taxes. So we don't even have to worry about that if this question has any bonds in it. And it looks like it will because it, they're telling us convertible debentures right here. Um, it says round all amounts to the nearest whole number, except for diluted EPS. Round that to two decimal places. 
So this is what would be presented to us in the SIM. All right, they want us to fill in the income available to stockholders plus assumed conversions. They want the weighted average number of shares outstanding. They want the dilutive effect of the shares that would be issued from conversion of the warrants, the preferred stock and the debentures. And if you see here, this 800,000, that's a calculated field. In other words, they're just summing up lines five, six, seven. And then line nine is the sum of line three and line eight. So if there's not a one, two, three next to it, that's not a cell that you would have to fill out. They're just auto-populating uh, or calculating based off of your responses. And then of course, we have diluted EPS. Okay, so for this problem, I'm definitely gonna need a whiteboard. I'm not gonna be able to write on the screen with enough room. Okay. Now it says in the second quarter of year one, okay, year one, let's come up here really quick. This is saying diluted earnings per share worksheet for the six months ended June 30th, year two. So we're being asked to plug in these values based off of the six month period ending June 30th, year two. Okay, so this problem, like I mentioned, it's unique because we're not looking at a 12 month period of time. We're looking at six months here. Okay, which is gonna change a lot of things in this problem. Um, and it's as of year two, all right? So they're saying in the second quarter of year one, 600,000 shares of convertible preferred stock were issued. Okay, that doesn't have any relevance for us in year two, all right? Um, one thing I wanna say is dates, you should pay very close attention to those. You should watch them like a hawk. Um, because if you can keep your dates straight, then the problems can become a lot more simple, right? If you were looking at this problem and you're like, oh, you know, I, if you didn't take a close look at it and you thought that you were supposed to do this for year one, it would throw you for a serious loop, right? You know, they're issuing convertible preferred stock partway through year one. Well, how do I handle that if I'm trying to solve for my diluted EPS in year one? right? It's just going to confuse you. So make sure you really pay close attention to the dates because now that we know we're focusing specifically on year two, when we see this mention of year one stuff, we know that's in a past time period. All right. So 600,000 shares of convertible preferred stock were issued in the second quarter of year one. The quarterly dividend on the convertible stock is five cents per share payable at the end of each quarter. Okay, so we're paying a quarterly dividend, five cents for each one of those shares. Each share is convertible into one share of common stock. Okay, now it says common shares outstanding at January 1st, year two were 3.3 million. So remember, we're looking for the six month period of time from January to June 30th for year two. So the shares at the beginning of the period were 3.3 million. All right, warrants to buy 500,000 shares of common stock at 60 bucks per share were for five years were issued. So we've got some warrants. They tell us that 300,000 shares of common stock were issued for cash on March 31st. And then they give us the average market price for common stock, okay? And then it says, additionally, in the last quarter of year one, JLC issued 4% convertible debentures with a principal of 10 million due in 20 years at $1,000 par, okay? Interest is payable annually on November 1st. Each $1,000 debenture is convertible into 20 shares of common stock. JLC did not declare or pay any dividends on its common stock, okay? On its common stock for year two. And then they give us net income for year two, breaking it down by quarter. So step one, we always have to calculate basic EPS. So in our numerator, well, we need net income minus preferred dividends divided by weighted average common shares. Okay, we are trying to calculate diluted EPS 
for the six month period of end of the six month period of time ending June thirtieth, year two. That would be as of Q two. Okay. So we're gonna add the three and the 